Welcome back everyone. This is a super quick little video. I just realized that I'd made the changes to the Robot Control iOS app but hadn't really covered off on what those changes were. So I've just put this little video together. It's just looking at the iOS app, at the changes we made to the UI to support tuning the robot over Bluetooth. So let's have a look at it now. Okay, so let's take a look at the changes we made. But first of all, I'd recommend having a look at the original video I did on building this app because it covers off on a lot of the Bluetooth stuff. I'm really just going to talk about the UI changes that were made. Just looking at the actual robot control scene, what I've actually done is just enlarged the text zone a little bit put a button on here to be able to toggle between settings and run mode and put a new view here which probably in a little bit sort of lacks here I should have had two separate views here but I've just sort of whacked it in on top of and in the same location as the joystick view as you can see there when I set this one to hidden but basically just some labels and text fields here to be able to enter the values in. And if we look at the text fields, the delegate is set up to be this view controller for all of these particular text views. So now if we take a look at the actual code behind that view, really there's only a couple of functions that we need to look at. First of all, we've got this setting or tuning toggle button pressed. And if the serial port is ready, then it swaps between adjust settings and run mode. Else it will just display a message saying, okay, the device is not ready, so why bother type thing? We've set the delegate method, text field should return on all of those text fields. So if someone hits the done or enter key or whatever it's set up for, I believe I've set it up for done, then it will actually remove the focus from that view and make the keyboard go back down. Okay, next the text field did end editing. So when the text field ends editing, first thing we do is try and cast that as a float. And if it can be cast as a float, then we'll assume that someone's put a valid value in there. We check to see which text field they've entered data into, and then basically just create a message with the name of the field and the actual text value with carriage return on the end of it, which we are looking for in the robot code. If it can't be converted to a float, then we basically just say, hey, try a number and uh, get them to enter again. And save pressed, if someone presses save, then we just send a W. Scrolling back up, there are a couple of other things that have changed, which are relatively minor. If we look at on load, then the title is set to adjust settings of that particular button because that's the mode we want it to start off in. And also the reload view, which is uh, executed when we return from the device view controller. Also, we'll just put it back in there. So if we're in settings mode, and the device disconnects or something like that and you go back and reconnect it when it comes back in here it's going to come back up in run mode by default okay and that's pretty much it for the changes okay cheers if you like what i'm doing then please do like the video if you'd like to see more then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when i post something new and i'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.